Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get into today's episode, a couple of quick, really cool things to tell you about. First of all, congrats to Phil Lanz and Uriah Heap's keyboardist and one of the primary songwriters for finishing his book trilogy, The Evil with a Thousand Faces. All three books, uh, well, the first two are available now. The third one is on pre-order. It will be available March 31st. Get your order in. On the website, scotthaskin.com, go to Uriah Heat Podcast, scroll down to Phil's section, and you will see links for all three books on Pegasus and Amazon UK. The first two books are available on Amazon US. I am waiting for that link for the third one to show up, but get your order in. That is a huge undertaking, so seriously, well done, Phil. Also, I told, uh, told you guys about this on the first couple of episodes. Go to Elkie's website. That is in the show notes and on my website as well. And go check out her picture. She's done uh, a beautiful picture that spans Uriah Heep's music over the first 24 albums. There is a song to be found. A couple albums have two songs, but there is at least one song per album to be found. The answers are on her website, as well as the full picture and some zoomed in things. And uh, she will also give you hints. So it's a very cool thing. It's a lot of fun to uh, see if you can figure out what pictures represent what songs. And uh, it was a a great painting by Elkie. So go and check that out. And now today's episode. Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week, we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to Uriah Heat, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host. My name is Scott Haskin. I've been here with you guys since the beginning of this show, or for however long you've been listening, but I've been here the whole time bringing you song by song, the recording studio history of Uriah Heep. Man, has it been a joy. We've caught up to their current album on the market, number 24, Live in the Dream, released in September 2018. I saw them live for the first time after it had been recorded, but before it had been released here in Las Vegas. And then I saw them the second time after it had been released when they were opening for Judas Priest. Both amazing concerts. Um, hopefully they'll be making it back around the world before too much longer. At least they're getting some dates in Europe right now. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. Hopefully this whole stupid COVID thing will go away and they can return to the States, uh, you know, for crying out loud. So uh, we're here to talk about the song today, Goodbye to Innocence. And I certainly remember the night I lost my... Well, anyway, we're here to talk about the song, not about me. And uh, let's just get right into it. Here it is. Goodbye to Innocence by your right heat. I'm hearing at least two guitars in the intro. I'm thinking there might be three in there because that sound is pretty thick. Uh, You know, in the higher up in pitch you go on a guitar, the sound starts to thin out a little bit. But I I know there's two. I suspect there may be a third one. Uh, The bass and the organ are doing a great job just keeping up the background. The drums are really interesting because there's nothing to keep the count. So a lot of times in a, in a part like this, I would expect like, you know, you would hear a hi-hat ticking off or something like that to kind of give you a little bit of sense of what the, the tempo is. But we really don't have that. We just have the drums he's hitting. So it feels like it's missing a little something, even though it's not. I mean, you don't have to put a count in there. It's probably better if you don't, because it just leaves it a little more open. And you don't have anything like specific like that to draw your attention away from those beautiful guitars we're hearing. And 
when your bass drums are that punchy and that big in the mix, it certainly changes the feel of a double bass shuffle, doesn't it? Um, that's really powerful. It's it's similar to that hot for teacher sound, which I think is what probably most people think of when they think about like that double bass kind of playing. But uh, this sounds really good. The, the drums just sound huge. I love it. Russell is on top of his game on this song. You know, musically, this isn't very challenging so far. Um, there aren't uh, a lot of uh, notes being played. It's really just simple chords and background and, and really just kind of paving the way for Bernie to come through and sing. And that's great. It doesn't have to be intricate. Not everything has to be 100 notes a measure. You know, sometimes it's just nice to, to step back a little bit, play something that sounds good, play it well, have it mixed well so that it fills up the entire sound field but doesn't have to be technical. And I think this song is a great example of sometimes what you can do with something simple instead of just a lot of technical stuff that you can easily lose your listeners with. You know, even singing just a single track on this song, right in this spot, Bernie's voice just sounds so thick and rich, doesn't it? Got a good amount of grit to it. Just just not too much to, to make him sound raspy. Just a good amount of grit, which is exactly what a hard rock song like this needs. It just enhances it that much more. And he's, you know, just like everybody else, he's on top of his game on this one. Like all of them. You know, I like that on, I think, just about every song that we've heard so far on this album, there's some point where Dave comes in with a bass run going up into the higher notes, just kind of in the middle of something. And it, it always adds just a nice little flavor to it. But I love that that's been a pretty consistent thing throughout the album. Well, if you're going to write a rock song singing about a wild school girl, you got to have a wild guitar solo. And that was it. Um, that sounded double track to me, although, as we know, they can record one track and duplicate it, shift it into separate speakers to make it sound like two. But I don't know. I have a feeling that that was recorded with both tracks uh, being played by Mick. Just seems like the thing that he would do. Um, but it sounded great. You know, I, I love the creativity. I love that hanging on with uh, the note vibration at the end there. That was really, really unexpected and cool. And, you know, in a song like this where you don't have a lot of space to do a solo, I mean, sure, you could make a lot of space, but, you know, sometimes in a faster song, it's nice to have a short solo. I love the way it ends on a little effect right there. Uh, very well, very well done.
That little lick from Phil in there is pretty interesting on the organ after Goodbye to Innocence. Um, I don't know if that's like a, a little bit of a nod to Van Halen or not, because it's about, you know, schoolgirl, teacher uh, are, are the topics of the two songs. The beat is really similar. Um, the opening was different, obviously, because that would just be silly to redo that. But um, I don't know. It has the same the same feel as Hot for Teacher. And then there's just that that little lick from Phil. So I don't know if that was a bit of a nod to Van Halen or not. If it was uh, well done. If it wasn't, then that was a very happy accident. Well, that was a bit of an abrupt ending. Um, I want more. You know, it's a it's such a great grooving song. The solos are great. I love what Phil played at the end there. And then it just ended. Give me more. There's there was so many directions that this song could go. Um, what a shame. I, I really like it. And, um, you know, it, it's just one that you just kind of get excited with. And you can't help it. The beat will just like make you move or feel good or, you know, whatever it is that that you react with. And, um, I really think that this could have gone a, a lot more directions. It's a, it's a fairly short song, obviously. Um, but the end is just so abrupt. It leaves me wanting more of that song. Um, so, but we're not going to get it. That's the way it is. So, uh, that'll be the end of the episode then, I guess that's, that's just, uh, how it goes, but good song, good song, really energetic. Um, some good solo work in there, uh, unexpected beat, um, great vocal, great guitar and, and organ work. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a great song. I love how Dave just crept in there for a minute with that, uh, that bass run, lots of stuff to enjoy in it. It just, it was just over too fast for me. And that is the sign of good songwriting. You know, if you want more and that's beyond what the musicians wanted to provide, then that's just, that's just it. Or maybe sometimes when things are good, but they're too short, you just automatically want more. Maybe it's the, you can't have this because, so I want it more. I don't know, but I think it's just good music. I think, um, you know, another minute or so would have been really nice, but we get what we get and we enjoy what we can. So that is goodbye to innocence. A great song from Uriah Heap. We will be back in a couple of days with our next review. This one is called falling under your spell. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the magician's podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.